What's good, everybody? It's your boy Daniel Sun Dunn, and I'm back at y'all with another video. Now, today I got something real special for y'all. Now, y'all already read the title and saw the thumbnail. Y'all know what's going on. We're going to be talking about five of my favorite moments in NBA history. And before I even get into it, I don't know why I have to say this, but I feel like I have to. This is my personal favorites. This is stuff that are near and dear to my heart, stuff that I experienced as an NBA fan and just loved it. So I don't want to hear anybody in the comments saying, but you forgot this or you forgot this. I didn't forget anything because this is my favorite. This is stuff that I love about the NBA. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my five favorite moments in NBA history. The first thing I want to talk about is the 2020 Denver Nuggets versus Utah Jazz series. Now, this is really, really recent. Y'all should know what I'm talking about. This is the series where the Jazz went up 3-1 against the Denver Nuggets and the Denver Nuggets made that comeback. And when I tell you that was the most insane that was one of the most insane things I've ever seen because that whole season, I was rooting for Nikola Jokic. I thought he was the second best, if not the best center in the league. And going into the playoffs, I had them winning in six or seven games. Then I saw them go down 3-1, but something in my gut, I just I just felt it in my gut that they was not finna lose this series. Even though everybody else was like, yo, they're done. Like the season is over for Denver and they were like pretenders or whatever. So for them to come back from that 3-1 lead was already insane in itself. But on top of that, I got to see one of the best battles in NBA history, and that's Jamal Murray versus Donovan Mitchell. It was like they were both out there putting up 50 in the same game and back-to-back -back games, and both of them were out there shooting ridiculous numbers, shooting like 50, 50, 90 from the field, just going back and forth. And I remember after the series was done, I was like, I can't even be mad at Utah for blowing this lead because it wasn't so much as Utah blowing the lead as it was Denver just having some crazy fight in them and just putting their heads down and putting in work and getting those last three W's in a row. Every time D. Mitch or Jamal Murray hit one of those crazy Stephen Curry deep contested threes, it felt like I was watching artwork, a movie happen. It was just insane. It was so fun to watch. Outside of my own opinion of it being one of my favorite series I've ever watched, I think objectively that it's like a top 10, top five head to head duel in NBA playoff history. It was that crazy. Next, I want to talk about a playoff series that happened not too long ago. And I'm not gonna be talking about the whole series, more so the last two games of the series. And this is the Nets versus the Bucks. I wasn't all that invested in the series. I wasn't really trying to watch it. I was kind of bored. But for whatever reason, I watched the game six and I saw Kevin Durant go out there and put 49, 17, and 10 on the Bucks head. I was like, yo. Kevin Durant want to win. He do not want to lose this series. And this is after the game. He shot really, really poor from the field. Like he had a really, really bad game this game before. So for him to come out there and put a 50 point triple double on the head was insane. But for him to come out the next game and put up 48 and have one of the best game tying shots, it should have been the game winner, but have one of the best game tying shots in NBA history. I went berserk when I saw that going because I didn't think it was going in. I remember watching KD catch the ball and it looked like a bad pass. It looked like he kind of fumbled the pass a little bit like he didn't have full control. He grabbed it and then he did like a spin where he looked like he was out of control a little bit. And he turned around and shot it. I was like, that's not going in. And that thing dropped and that was going insane. I know Katie's good. I know Katie is that dude. I didn't think he was about to hit that shot. And it was just so unfortunate that if he didn't wear size 18 shoes, that he would be in the conference finals right now without question. And you could tell he was done by the time overtime came around and he just could not hit a shot at that point. Like he was, he was gassed. Up until overtime, it was just like watching a master at work. He was putting on a clinic out there all kind of fadeaway mid-range jump shots, driving to the lane, throwing dimes. He basically had a perfect night out there. Next on my list is the 2019 Rising Stars game. And y'all are probably gonna be like, what's so special about that game? Like nothing really happened. It was special because I actually went to the game. I didn't sit at home and watch it on TV. I actually went to the game and saw these players live in person. Even though I was in the nosebleeds, it was still such a surreal experience going to an NBA game. I've only been to a few games and this was just the most fun I've had at a game. I watched John Collins and Trey Young go out there and put on the show. Trey Young out there throwing live to John and John out there doing dunk contest type of dunks in game. And it's crazy because in 2019, 
Everybody except like Jason Tatum was on bad teams and were really just looking like the bottom feeders of the league. Even though they had a lot of potential, they were just on really, really bad teams. Fast forward two years later, these guys are in the conference finals. And for DeAndre Ayton, he's in the NBA finals. And Trey Young and John Collins might be in the NBA finals in a few days. We don't know. That moment just came full circle in my opinion because I was watching the game like, yo, the future of the league is so bright. And now just a few short years later, these guys are competing for championships. That was a crazy moment. Now we're gonna talk about the 2021 Atlanta Hawks playoff run. This run ain't even over yet. And regardless of how it finishes, this is gonna be forever one of my favorite moments in NBA history. And I'm gonna tell you why. Ever since we got rid of Al Horford, Paul Millsap, and all those guys from those mid 2010s Atlanta Hawks teams, my Hawks have been garbage. They've been trash. And I have been getting clowned by my homeboys, talking about how bad the Hawks are, how we're bottom feeders of the league, and how we're not gonna do anything this year. I got a homie who's a Lakers fan talking about, oh, it don't matter if y'all make the AC, y'all not even gonna do anything. And look how that turned out for him. Hawks finna be in the finals while the Lakers sitting at home. All right, I'm getting a little too excited. But you, you, you should understand this is for me because it's been six long years since we were a really good team. And even when we were a really good team, we got scrutinized so heavily because we was looked at as pretenders, as fakers, because we had four all-stars on the team and we ended up getting destroyed in the conference finals by LeBron James. Look how the tables have turned. When we got John Collins, I got happy because I saw him and I was like, yo, he got potential to be an all-star, not some superstar or anything, Thing, but he's going to be a valuable player in the years to come. Then the very next season, they draft Trey Young. And even though he had a rough first half of his rookie season, he turned it around and was looking like basically a superstar for the rest of the season. And I was like, yo, the Atlanta Hawks are going to be a very, very good team in a few years. And last year around November, I tweeted that the city of Atlanta will be champions by the time it's 2025. And it's looking like that's gonna happen sooner. It might not happen this year, but it's happening sooner or later. Trey Young came out here and is looking like a bona fide superstar. He looking like a top 15 player right now. Some people even got him as high as like 11 or 12. And in every single series, from the Knicks series to the Sixers series and to the Bucks series, they were the underdogs, the overwhelming underdogs, I might add. I saw people saying that the Hawks were going out in five to New York. Look what happened. We dominated the Knicks and then we got to Philly and people thought for sure, even I thought we was about to lose. I'm not even gonna hold you. I watch a lot of Philly basketball. They're a really good team, especially Joel Embiid. That dude is insane. I thought we were gonna get crushed and we beat them boys. And it wasn't no fluke or nothing either. One, nobody injured, everybody was completely healthy and we just went out there and we hooped. And now we in the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm not gonna lie, if we would've got swept in these Eastern Conference Finals, I wouldn't have cared. The fact that we made it this hard made me happy in itself, but the fact that we we might actually make the finals. We have a decent chance of making the finals. My mind is finna explode. I've been waiting for so long for this team to get good. And the fact that they got this good, this fast, this made my whole year. <laughs> now we gotta talk about my number one favorite moment in NBA history. That is the 2019 Kawhi Leonard playoff run. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a Kawhi Leonard fan. He is my favorite player in the league and my favorite player of all time. And it's been like that since around 2016. And back when the Hawks were bad, I was kinda a Raptors fan. I really liked Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. So you can only understand the excitement when I saw Kawhi Leonard, my favorite player, go to one of my favorite teams in the league and everybody doubted him. Nobody thought they would win. I cannot tell you how many times I saw people doubt Kawhi Leonard. People thinking he was a system player, thinking he wasn't going to be able to dominate with his own team. He wasn't going to be able to lead a team to a championship. The whole season he was scrutinized for leaving San Antonio, a healthy, prosperous organization. Everybody criticizing him for wanting out. And San Antonio was petty. They said, you don't want to play for us? You playing for another country now. He took what he had and he went out there and won a championship, even when everybody was doubting him. I remember in the first round after the Raptors lost game one against Orlando, all kind of people talking about that Kawhi not all that, this team is not all that, that they're pretenders, and we dominated the next few games. Then we played Philly, and Kawhi Leonard hit that insane shot. That's another shot that's like a top 10 game winning shot in NBA history. And then to see him go to the Eastern Conference Finals, get down 2-0, and my homie who a Bucks fan, he a Giannis fan, he was on on my head talking all kind of cash. He would not let me hear the end of it, but I said, all right, I'm not gonna do a lot of talking. The series is not over. I still got my team winning. And we went out there and won the next four games and sit them boys packing. Then we got to the finals 
And yeah, it was unfortunate that KD got injured and then in game six, Clay got injured. Up until Clay got injured, that series was pretty even. And it really got kind of lopsided once Clay lost. But I'm not gonna lie, I still thought they was gonna win even before Clay got injured. I wasn't scared at all. So people can argue about that all they want to. That's still a valid ring. If you want to invalidate 2019, you got to invalidate a whole lot of other rings, but that's a whole different conversation. That championship run after the whole year, Kawhi was getting criticized for forcing his way out of San Antonio. People thought he was a system player, thought he wasn't going to be able to do nothing on his own. People didn't even think that Raptors team was all that good, regardless of how well Kawhi could lead it or not. Then we got to the playoffs. I seen people taking Philly over the Raptors, and then we got to the Eastern Conference Finals. People were most definitely taking the newly crowned MVP of the league over Kawhi Leonard, and he went out there and show who the real MVP of the league is. And then in the finals, even though that Warriors team was a little bit crippled, you know, he went out there and handled business. And he did what he was supposed to do and he got that second ring and second finals MVP. It's going to take a lot to top that. I got so much nostalgia for that season. I really wish I got a Kawhi jersey. That's probably my favorite season in NBA history. I'm not even going to hold you. That was a great season. But with that being said, that's the video. I hope y'all enjoyed this peek into my more personal side of my NBA fandom. All my NBA videos up to this point have just been me analyzing the game and looking from a very objective and statistical way so it was fun just talking about the things i personally like in the nba if you want more videos like this talking about nba stuff go ahead and hit that like button go ahead and subscribe go ahead and leave a comment which i would like for me to talk about next it's been your boy daniel sundun and i'm gonna catch y'all in the next video peace